everybody, this is Crystal from OTP HVAC School and today we're going to talk about why RPM is important on motors and why you should not replace a different RPM for the one that is on your motor. So let's break it down and we'll talk about why in just a moment. Okay, so why get into any of this? Why is it important to understand RPM and how motors function and why it is so important that you get the correct RPM? Well, here's the deal. The answer to all of this is, like always, it's complicated because it can depend on what region you're in, uh, whether you're up in the north or the south, why it's more important in general areas. Obviously, if you're in the south, you're going to be running your condenser more often, unless, of course, you have a heat pump. So obviously, if you're from up north, both your blower motor and your condenser motor are going to be working hard year round. So you have to think about that as well. But it's not just all about, let's just put it in there. It'll work. It's been working for four years. It's fine. And if you have that sort of mentality, if it's just, I'm going to put it in there, it's going to work for a while, whatever. The problem is, it's not working like it should. You have shortened the life of the motor and possibly your system. More than likely, this has taken a toll on your compressor and it's not working as efficiently as it should. So that being said, let's understand why it's important especially with PSC motors. Like we mentioned before in the other video, when we were learning how to calculate our RPM of our motor based off of the poles, what we're trying to understand is why we would even need to learn that in the first place. So how does this function first so that I can understand how it's actually failing and what I should do to properly replace the part in my system? All of these look very similar, if not the same. Now this is an evaporator motor. Condenser motor is going to be a sealed motor. Okay, so now that we know that, we know what these are, we know how we calculate our RPM, why is this important? Well, in a PSC motor, my beautiful penmanship here, this is gonna be a permanent split capacitor motor. What that means is it has a separate capacitor, a run capacitor, uh, which stays in line while your system is on and it's energizing your fan motor. It will look something like this on your blower housing and your two wires to create that line through on your motor, on your auxiliary winding, also known as your start winding. Now, because a lot of new laws have passed for efficiency, most units now will have a DC driven motor, um, which will have some sort of either ECM or electronic communicating motor, or it will have an X13, which is a constant torque motor. It will have some sort of variable speed in there, and those are going to be different from the PSC motors. A lot of homeowners in a um, traditional single phase residential or some light commercial have PSC motors outside. Now there are some, I've seen trains especially, and uh, when you start getting up into the higher end series of a carrier, they'll have those ECM. But for simplicity's sake, we're gonna break it down as simply as possible. This is going to be your rotor, which is your rotating part, 
And this is your stator, which is your stationary part. These are what create your electromagnetic field. Now, if you're wondering, when we talk about a start winding or an auxiliary winding, yes, this is to start the motor or start your rotor here so that it gets the force or the torque to begin moving in the correct rotation and to keep it going. Because remember, this is a magnetic field. And obviously, we're working with alternating current. So unlike a DC motor, which does have windings, as we would spoke of before, but it is different. Then our power supply comes through from our main breaker. We got our, our power here. And here's our, I'll just say it's our electric current, right? Okay. So as that comes through, we've got our, our main, <laughs> it's not the state, it's not the state crystal. <laughs> we got our main winding here that gets energized first. Okay. Beautiful little curves. And then we have our second, which is our start winding. And let's see, we'll take that here. We're going to kind of, obviously, it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to go here. So on and so forth. So this has to coincide with the main winding because what it's doing is that main winding first gets energized and then there's just a short delay which is caused by the capacitor in the secondary or start winding. And the difference between the two, so between the main and the start, it takes on the form of a phase difference. So what that means is they're slightly offset from each other. And that's what we're, we're modeling here, is they're slightly offset from one another. So then since they are slightly offset like this, what that means is at the peak of each one of these magnetic fields, it causes it to alternate between these two windings, uh, which generates the torque needed to keep it all going and running smooth. Again, we do have to account for slip or motor slip as we spoke about in our previous videos. So. Again, we're only, keep this in mind, the reason why we're going over this is you're not using the full rotation. So if you have a six pole motor and we're dividing it by our 7200 to get our RPM like we mentioned before, and you are, again, full capacity without load is a 1200 RPM what it actually equals out to uh, or even just comes close to is somewhere between you know maybe 1050 1075 rpm so we're looking at somewhere around a 60 percent efficiency okay so just keep this in mind this is for a 1200 rpm motor so if your original motor was an 825, which actually equates to a 900, if we're going based off of our original formula, which is 8 into 7200, right? Okay, 
So keep in mind, again, we're, we're only getting 60%, which means if you're replacing an 825 RPM motor with a 1075 RPM motor, it's moving too fast based off of what that engineer designed that unit to be at 825 or 900 RPM. What else could happen when we replace that with that 1200 RPM motor, okay? Well, it has a fan blade or a blower wheel that is placed on there designed for this RPM. So if we place the wrong RPM on that, now we've messed up the blower wheel or the fan blade from what it was originally designed to run on. So just to put that into perspective for you, just based off of numbers, okay, uh, in our fixed frequency, this is where we're getting our numbers from here, is 60 hertz in the US. Okay. So that's where our numbers are coming from here. So on a six pole, we're looking at operational range between 900 to 1100 RPM. And this is a really high number uh, based off of a lot of motors and drag and resistance, all that fun stuff. Um, that's kind of a positive outlook there. On a six pole, this is ideally what you would get in your RPM. Okay, so there's our first number, right? But when we look at an eight pole, our operational speed can be anywhere from 600 to 850. Now just, just look at the numbers here. Look how much they differ. When you're looking on a motor like this and you see something that says 1080, 1075, and then you see another number that'll say 850, you know, when you look at it that way, it doesn't sound so different, right? But look at what it actually translates to on full load. If you had a motor that was that lower RPM like that, and you place something so different between the two, how would that not cause problems? And the answer is, it would, and it does. Now, the reason why this is especially important in, say, some of the more southern states with condenser fan motors is each of those fan blades have not just a different diameter, uh, but they're going to have a different pitch as well as to how high those fan blades are going to be moved for resistance, for the wind resistance as it spins, and it scoops the air out to dissipate the heat from your condenser coils. Whereas a blower motor wheel, now, and it, it is really odd in a lot of situations for a blower wheel to be attached to a blower motor that has a 900 RPM motor in it, they do exist. But this is especially important because of the differences in the RPM and with fan blades, especially because they're exposed to the outside conditions. And here in Texas, it can get really, really hot. And those condenser fan motors are worked really hard, uh, which is why capacitors tend to go out more in the south. Now, this is just a run capacitor. But uh, especially on those dual run capacitors, you can see them changed out quite often here once every few years. But because of all those factors and because of the load on that motor outside, that RPM really needs to match so that you are effectively cooling your condenser coils, therefore putting a lot less strain on your compressor and cooling it 
to its maximum efficiency for your unit to keep running. Time and time again, what we know is that as long as a system is properly maintained and cleaned and running like it's designed to be running, you're going to get that unit to work at the best if it can for as long as it can because you take care of it. So keep this in mind when you replace your motors. Make sure that the specs line up. If yours is a quarter horsepower, somewhere between 900 to, I've seen even some motors that say 810 RPM. Replace it with something that's going to be somewhere between 800 to 900 RPM. Same goes for those 1200 RPM motors. Now I've seen quite a few of the newer motors um, switching over to this 825 or 800 RPM and that's because an 825 RPM motor runs a lot quieter than a 1075 RPM motor. Now hypothetically you could replace it that way but then you're going to have to account for that uh, with your fan blades. So, you know, if you're going to be replacing all that, it seems like a lot of work to go through and a lot of calculating to figure out which fan blade should I use. And let me tell you, there's not a definite between some of the fan blades used for 825 RPM and some used for 1075 RPM. It's whatever the engineer has designed in order to unit running correctly. Now, you'll have to excuse me, guys. I've got a sinus infection going on here. So again, as long as you're doing what you need to do to keep your system running to its best ability, you don't have to worry about something breaking down on you in the middle of a really hot summer cold winter. So just make sure you're treating it correctly and it'll last many years for you. Thank you so much for joining us today and if you have any and if you have any questions just leave them in the comments below and I will respond to them as soon as possible. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.